the comeback kids. The Royals did it again last night. After trailing 2-0 into the sixth, the Royals scored four. And then three in the seventh. And then one in the eighth for their ninth come-from-behind win in April. A new month begins tonight on Fox Sports Kansas City. Royals baseball comes to you from Coffin Stadium, which is still buzzing after last night's exciting 8-2 come-from-behind victory over the Tampa Bay Rays. Hi, everyone. I'm Ryan Lefevre. Welcome to Royals baseball. And don't let the approaching weather fool you. The month of April is behind us, and the Royals are 14-10. and 10. That's quite a departure from last year when the Royals were 6-15. and 15. Now, you'd be surprised the numbers are actually pretty comparable starters era is about the same compared to last year runs per game is about the same but there's one big difference of course it's the record but if you go a little bit deeper nine come from behind wins already nine come from behind wins in one month that's tied for second in the major leagues and while the offense might be a little thin right now the way they spread it out is not thin ten different players with go ahead rbis rex hudler we bring you in now and say how has this all happened? It's happened as spring training developed. They walked spring training. They killed teams. They were bashing the ball. They were pitching. All of it started then. Now, they've won Cactus League titles before, and a lot of people will tell you that's good for 90 losses. Uh-uh, not this year. With a newly armed staff, when a lot of confidence going into spring training and also coming out, these guys are doing it. Take, for example, the four bases-loaded walks earlier this month. I mean... Those are finding ways to win games. And a great characteristic that you can instill in your ball club, maybe the best, is the fact that you're not out of games. So coming from behind those nine games, that tells them that they're in every single game, no matter how badly they get down. That's going to carry them well into the season. Love to see those numbers. James Shields was great last night. Luis Mendoza starts tonight. He hasn't made a start in two and a half weeks.
damage against his former team, breaking out of an 0 for 13 slump with two hits. He scored a run and stole a base. Welcome back to Kauffman Stadium. Joel Goldberg out in right field, and Elliott will get another start tonight at second base. And he has a pretty, pretty good idea of what he and the Royals will see from Jeremy Hellickson because, of course, he was in the same dugout with Hellickson when they were both raised. And the one thing he said about Hellickson is that he is not going to miss very much. Great control. If you see him miss his target, most likely it's on purpose. Great fastball command. Unbelievable changeup. He has a good curve that he won't use a whole lot, but he can use it if needed. You'll see him work slowly and looks like he's slow, but he's a great athlete. He said in every at bat, you might get one pitch to hit, and that is it. Need to look for mistakes. He and the Royals will do that. First pitch is coming up next from Kauffman Stadium. Ryan and Rex are back with the call. Lottery. Play it forward with Missouri Lottery. And by Chevrolet, your Kansas City Chevy dealers, the official vehicle of the Kansas City Royals. And by AT&T, the wireless receiver only from ATT Uverse. Visit att.com slash free your TV. Rethink possible. The temperature has dropped about 15 degrees over the past three hours. From the upper 80s to the low 70s. The Royals take the field in high definition. Brought to you by Time Warner Cable. The official TV, internet, and home phone provider of the Kansas City Royals. So the power hitting Tampa Bay Rays. They extended their streak of at least one home run in 15 straight games last night in the first inning. But that's all they would score. Mostly the same lineup tonight, with the exception of the last two spots. Jose Lobatone will be behind the plate, and Kelly Johnson will be in left field. And they'll be facing right hander Luis Mendoza. His last start was April 12th. Yeah, he's going to be a little bit strong, most likely. And that's not necessarily always good because a sinker baller like Mendoza is, sometimes if you overthrow it, it flattens out and stays straight and it's hittable. But if he's on his game and he expends a few pitches in the first inning keep that sinker down curveballs change ups everything that moves down really is going to be important for the defenders to be on top of their game with Mendoza defending behind him I'm going to show you the important guys certainly going to be the left side of the infield right here 
with Escobar and Moose, if his sinker's working the way he wants it to in his changeup, a lot of guys might could be rolling over that ball. So be alive for ground balls. They'll be ready. And there will be no easy plays in the air for the infield or the outfield. It's another windy night, but a completely different win. Yesterday and the day before, it was a strong wind out of the south, warming Kansas City up. And now it's a pretty stiff wind out of the northwest, cooling Kansas City down. And we could be in the 50s before the game's over tonight. It's amazing how quickly it changed. A strike from Mendoza to Desmond Jennings, who swung sort of at the first pitch last night. It was more of a check swing and ended up with an infield single and scored on the Matt Joyce home run. That's a full swing and a miss, 0 and 2. They'd like to see him cut down on his swing a little bit. He's had 15 strikeouts over his last 10 games. Not what you want from your leadoff guy. Perez putting his glove on the dirt. He wants this pitch down, and it is. Jennings thought about it. One ball, two strikes. Well, I take that back. My uh, weather bug is not accurate. It is 66 degrees, so it's dropped about 20 degrees in the past few hours. Still one and two on Jennings. I bet there's some people here in Kansas City that left their homes with short sleeves and, sh and uh, shorts on and got to the ball game and went, wow. It changed a little bit on us. Mm -hmm. But then there were some smart folks, too, that brought their leather jackets. See, the guy in the black is telling the guy in the blue shirt. It's experience, young man. <laughs> it's experience. Yeah, that's right. There we go. Yep. Cover up a little bit. It'd be nice to get this game in for sure. We don't know about the next two. Three balls, two strikes on Jennings, who is batting just 227. That base hit in the first inning was his only hit last night, and the Royals struck him out twice. James Shields, seven innings, two runs. Kelvin Herrera and Greg Holland each pitched a scoreless inning last night. Struck him out. Good start for Mendoza. And a fastball tailing in on Jennings. One down. I think that's 16 strikeouts now Jennings has had over the last 11 games. So Mendoza used maybe a few more pitches than he wanted, but the result was good. Keep him off the base. Here's another weather report. And if you're wondering about what's on its way, it is 66 here at Kauffman Stadium. In Lincoln, Nebraska, it's 34. Ooh. So bring your plants in tonight. Matt Joyce, for the second night in a row, hits a blast to right field and a home run. That's a team record for Tampa Bay, a home run in 16 consecutive games. And for Matt Joyce, that is his sixth home run of the year. Wow, carbon copy from last night's game. How dare the Rays go ahead of the Royals? It just sets them up for a possible, a possibly getting beat again. I mean, the Royals got nine come from behind wins out of their 14. Well, look at it this way: every time Matt Joyce hits a home run in the first inning against the Royals this year, the Royals win. So if we'll see if it happens again tonight. <laughs> Was that exhaustive research? Yeah. For what did you say the other day? Extensive homework? Yeah. Is that what it was? I missed again. One and one on Ben Zobrist. Zobrist was in right last night, and now he's at second base tonight. In one season with Tampa Bay, he played seven different positions. That's hit well to right field. And Frank Coor will watch that one sail into the bullpen. Back to back home runs, Joyce and Zobrist. And for Zobrist, that is his third. Okay, I mentioned that first inning. Important for Mendoza to keep that ball down. He's a little bit strong. And when you're strong, your sinker's not sinking. And that's 
been the case so far early in this one. There it is. Fastball down the middle elevated. And Zobris just took his hands right to the ball and got underneath it. Inside to Evan Longoria who is hitless last night. He did reach with a walk. One ball one strike. It's the first time this year the Rays have gone back to back homers. Curveball for a strike. Mendoza's first start was in Philadelphia. And I thought the key pitch for him that's his best appearance so far was his curve. And then his next start was against Toronto and they knocked him around a little bit. And they were not swinging at the curve. And down goes Longoria. So a couple of strikeouts. Book ending a couple of home runs two down. You know he, he's really going to have to. Get that curveball over in order to get to. His powerful lineup. Mix him up. Those are the first two home runs allowed by Mendoza this year. And now maybe the hottest raise hitter at the moment James Loney. Who's hitting 373 he had three hits. Last night and that was the third time in his last four games he's had three hits. And a breaking ball for strike one. Well you're locked in when you can get three hits in a game and then continue it. Three out of the four games. He's seeing the ball well. Likes to pull the ball if he can. One and one. Trying to go the other way. One ball, two strikes. Loney is out of the Dodgers system and was their first round pick in 02. Excellent defensive first baseman, but. Well he didn't hit the home runs. That the Dodgers were hoping for from that position he did drive in 90 or more runs twice. Two and two. And if you're driving in 90 runs I guess you don't have to worry too much about the home runs. Just however you're getting them in get them in Madden's most impressed with his glove. Pitch number 20 in the inning. And it's three and two. Jennings struck out, Joyce homered, Zobrist homered, Longoria struck out. And a curve is fouled away. You know one of the things that's impressed me about Mendoza since last year was not just you know his bulldog mentality and how big and strong he is but really it's his attitude he's got a great attitude and for a number five starter that gets skipped especially as many off days as the Royals have had this year it hasn't bothered him one bit always smiling have you ever seen him angry no except you know out there on the mound he's not going to show that smile too often but he's got a great spirit. And he's at the bag to get Loney to end the inning. So just like last night, the Rays get two in the top of the first inning.
game tonight that he did not see the rally last night coming out of nowhere the Royals with four in the sixth, three in the seventh one in the eighth and after doing nothing for five and two thirds innings the Royals ended up with a blowout victory and Ned's going to go with the same lineup tonight which includes Elliot Johnson batting ninth at second base and that's going to be our sprint unlimited answers question who is your pick to hit who's going to be the offensive star tonight and you have nine choices text 432 432 to vote and then enter a through I you don't say that very often you know last night I thought it was going to be moose and it was now, I don't know if I'm going to be right again but I'm going to go with Lorenzo Kane tonight personally I think low Kane's going to pick up any scraps that are left over that Billy Butler doesn't get from the top I'll be facing another good pitcher 26 year old Jeremy Hellickson the American League rookie of the year two years ago and he has a lot of friends and family here tonight. He is from Des Moines, drafted by the Rays out of Hoover High School, and has about 50 to 60 friends and family here tonight. He is a young man. The opponent's only hitting 216 so far this season. Got a fastball, he'll vary. He's got a sinking fastball and a cutter. He can reach 95 miles an hour with his four seam. A curveball and his best pitch is his changeup. So he'll be another tough foe, although he has allowed 15 runs. This year, eight of those have come in the first inning. So, go to Hackett. However, the Royals have not scored in the first inning over the last seven games. So, he's been prone to giving up some early runs in the first. Jump on him. Alex driven into deep left center field. Jennings showing off his speed, and he made the play on the track. Wow, Gordon looked up. He's standing at second base saying, really? He made that catch? Wow. That ball left his bat. I thought for sure that was going to be in the gap. Jennings showing that at great speed. Didn't have to leave his feet even. Full speed on the run. Look at the focus. Oh. So you know what Alex says? All right, don't hit it to me because I'm gonna I'm gonna take everything I can get from you. Great play. And yeah, we just saw the reaction of Hellickson. He's still not quite yet on the mound yet. He had to take a little while to soak that one in. He was thinking runner at second or third with nobody out. And here he is pitching out of the windup with one out and nobody on. That's why you got your speed guy in center. Got to run those down. I mean, it, had he not caught that, no one would have said a word. It would have been great hitting by Gordon. There's the change up. One and one on Escobar. One for five with a run scored and a stolen base last night, hitting 286. One and two. Hellickson's got a, it's not as exaggerated, but it looks like he's got a little bit of Alex Cobb in him, too. Kind of a slow, deliberate, a lot of moving body parts in the windup. That's past the mound. And the Rays, Escobar, bare hand play and a good one. So Hellickson's been backed up by two great defensive plays to begin the bottom of the first I'll say wow that ball was was moving at a pretty good speed for a bare hander but he was very confident when he made that play all right defensively there they are they've made just 10 errors this year they've done a pretty good job so far a lot better than last year with their errors Matt Joyce he's in right field this is making his 11th start in right seven and left two as a DH Joe Madden likes athletes. He likes guys that play multiple positions. Jose Lobaton, and we just showed you the league's been running on him. Successful in 10 of 11 attempts. Royals are aware of that. Billy one for four last night with his 15th RBI of the year. One and one against Hellickson. So 257 with a 404 on base percentage. Big walks, 18 already this year, third most in the American League. 
The curveball got away from Hellickson. Two balls and one strike. Well, you know, facing a guy that's giving up a lot of walks, you, you don't necessarily want to go up there and take, 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 and get it in the hole. You got to, you know, kind of wait him out a little bit here. So, you know, see some pitches early. And if he falls behind, then you can take. Although you're not going to ask Billy Butler to take here three and one. That ball shooting out to right is that winds changed from last night to, to tonight from the left field foul pole to the right. Wait on one and drive one that way. And that wind on Alex Gordon's drive helped Desmond Jennings a little bit or a lot of it. And there's a base hit into left field for Billy. So he's at first with two down and now Eric Hosmer comes to the plate and he got that two out four run rally started in the bottom of the six and it was off a breaking ball a pretty good pitch that was down and he was able to stay inside it and lift it and that's his strength he loves to go the opposite field got up underneath that and got it going now the frenzy hitting that happened after that was on a lot of off speed pitches by Cobb there was some talk about maybe he was Cobb was tipping his pitches or or giving them away but I want to credit the Royals approach and they'd already seen him three times and now they've, they've adjusted. They know he was going with a lot of breaking balls. And they didn't miss him. He was missing out over the plate. And so, you know, sometimes you can pick a certain uh, tendency that a pitcher's doing, maybe. And you might be able to, to, to pick up on a certain pitch. But I'm just going to call that contagious hitting until I find any, out anymore. A little bit inside, one ball, one strike. It's a good sign, though, to get Hosmer going. He still hasn't homered. Now, it would seem, HUD, that Hellickson and Cobb are very similar in style. So, does that help the Royals tonight? Yeah, it does. It, you, you know, compared to a guy like, like a Obaldo Jimenez, you know, coming in, it's really funky wind up and delivery. It, it, it's, it helps. But to me, Hellickson's a little bit more deliberate. Cobb had a pause in his delivery at the top and then a slow pause as he was separating his hands. And looks like Helgson's a little bit smoother, although similar. Both fastballs in the low 90s. Both of them have a very good changeup. Two and two on Hosmer. Okay, here's a little split of them. You see them both here. They both have that leg kick. Cobb's not as high as Hellickson, but they're very similar. Biggest difference might be their height. Hellickson is listed at 6'1, but he'll even admit he's closer to 5'11. And Hosmer chases a pitch down. And Jennings coming up in center field makes the play. And Hellickson got two very good defensive plays behind him as the Royals are scoreless in the first.
back on Saturday, June 15th. And anyone 25 years or older can join the Royals alumni on the field. One pitch, one out. Good start to the second inning for Luis Mendoza. The cost is $300. It's from 8 a.m. to noon. And that includes breakfast, a T-shirt, shorts, and an autographed baseball by the pros who will participate. Call 816-504-4150 to sign up for Royals alumni batting practice. Luis Mendoza gave up a couple of solo home runs in the first inning. Also struck out two. And now one out on one pitch against Escobar. And will deal to Scott. And Luke Scott takes a strike. I'd like to go to Jeff Montgomery. When we were on the field doing our roundtable on the radio side before the game and talking about Luis Mendoza and he hasn't started a game in about two and a half weeks. How is he going to deal with some rust? Monty, you thought he might go to the curveball quite a bit early and he did in the first inning. It's oftentimes difficult to judge what's going to you know how things are going to open up for a pitcher who has not had a lot of game activity. And oftentimes a sinker ball, especially if you go to that breaking ball, it allows you to start working down. I noticed the first few pitches he threw of the game through the sinker and he was up because that sinker was not getting the, the life he's used to getting. And as a result, we saw two home runs. But that's why I like to always try to maybe go to my off pitches when I'm having trouble getting that sinker down. And that ball's down. And Escobar had to go back to his normal spot, jump throw. It's past Hosmer, but hits the netting. And Luke Scott will have an infield single. Well, there you have it, Hud. Yeah, when you're a little bit, see that that shift went against him there. Scott told me yesterday that he was going to focus middle of the field. He knows they're going to play him to pull like Elliot Johnson in shallow right field. Hit against the shift there, it worked. But getting back to, to Jeff Monty, while we have you, I talked about when you're strong and you're a sinker baller, it's hard to get that sinker to sink because you're a little bit strong and it might take him after that first thing to kind of settle in. And sure enough, he left some pitches flat out over the plate. Yeah, another thing that a sinker baller would do is maybe throw an extra 10 or 15 pitches in his warm up in the bullpen to try to get a little bit dull and maybe get a little more tired than normal when he comes in a game. It doesn't sound very productive to, to think about doing it, but you think about the amount of pitches he's thrown over the last two and a half, three weeks. It's just not been enough pitches to keep his arm strength at that level where he has the life that he needs. Against hitters especially. You can throw in the pin all you want on the side, and they, they've been doing that with him, but when you're not facing a hitter, it's hard to tell. The other tough part about that is you can't throw too much because you may be called in the second or third inning of a game and need to be able to, to you know, give your manager three, four, five innings in a, in a long relief role. So you have to be a little cautious on the amount of work you do get before your next start. And there you go. A, a sinker that stayed up to Lobatone and now three balls and no strikes. Lobatone hitting 235. Jose Molina was the catcher for the Rays last night. And that's across the knees for a strike. And like a lot of backup catchers, known more for his defense than his bat. And now a walk. Two on, one out. And again, it's the fastball that was up. Well, Ned Yost said yesterday, he reiterated again today, that to be a number five starter, it's a completely different mentality, especially early in the season, because you just don't know when you're going to pitch. And it's a valuable position, and someone has to be cut out for that. I've always said to be a fifth guy in a rotation, you almost have to be like a utility player. You have to accept that role and understand that there are certain situations where you may sit for two and a half weeks before you have a start, and you have to stay sharp just like a utility guy has to come off that bench at times and, and do the job. And now strike to Kelly Johnson. Okay, that had a little bit more downward action to it. That was a, a better sinker there. And speaking of utility guys, Kelly Johnson isn't exactly one, but Joe Madden's been playing him in left field. He's been DH, second base, played a little bit of first. 
another guy that can swing around different positions. One ball, one strike. Sometimes the, the biggest challenge for a manager or pitching coach is find a guy that's willing to accept that role, just like it's difficult for sometimes utility guys to accept their role as, as that bench player. Got that right. And again, up with the fastball, two and one. Now, for somebody who didn't pitch, sorry, Hood. That's it's okay. like, okay, well, you just need to get the ball down. Well, he knows that. So what's keeping him from getting the ball down? It's so difficult because just like as a hitter, you're trying to stay back, and when you're in, a, in, a, in a, some kind of a slump and you keep jumping out and trying to get the ball before it gets to the plate, as a pitcher, you do this, You have the same tendencies. You want to kind of jump forward, and, and, and your whole body gets ahead of your arm, and it makes it very difficult to get that downhill plane that's required. Every pitcher needs to be pitching downhill, and especially a sinker ball pitcher. Two and two on Kelly Johnson. Luke Scott at second base. Jose Lobatone is at first. And now three and two. Mendoza has appeared once since his last start. That was Wednesday at Detroit. So, but that was still a week ago. So even his last appearance, you have to go back seven days, and he went two and a third innings. Johnson slices it up the left field side, and that is foul. So in the last two and a half weeks, he's been pitching a lot in the bullpen, and he's been playing a lot of catch. But he's only been in a game twice and you go back to that game last Wednesday in Detroit. He wasn't very sharp when he first came out of the bullpen. He got better as he went along and very difficult conditions on that game. But he was still he, he had trouble. He had three walks in his two and a third inning. So he got better as he as he went along. But it's still difficult, especially if you're a starting guy. You have to get things going in the first inning. And Johnson hits it hard to right over his former Braves teammate Jeff Francoeur. And that's off the fence for an RBI double. Scott scores. Lobatone goes to third. And Kelly Johnson has driven in his ninth run of the year. Tampa Bay leads 3 0. So I'm sure the message being sent back to the Rays dugout is hey, lay off of his breaking stuff. Look for something out over. He's going to give it to you. Yeah, he's thrown a lot of thigh high pitches, thigh high belt high pitches, yep. and they just have not missed them. Oop. Infield in, halfway, with Jennings at the plate, and Lobatone at third. Fans ask sometimes, why all the way in? And why halfway in and it has to do with the runner at third right that's right you know and also with a runner at second and third sometimes you play him halfway and it gives him more range they can knock the ball down not let that runner from second score but if, it, if there is a ball right at him they can cut down the run at home well Mendoza got up to a good start tonight he faced Jennings and struck him out that was before the back to back home runs. And now Jennings with another chance in the next inning with two in scoring position. And the curve is low. Two balls and one strike. That curveball in Philadelphia, I mean, that had the Phillies all mixed up. And then the Blue Jays, I'm sure they watched that video because they just weren't swinging at that pitch in his next start like the Phillies were. Well, if you go back to last year, he struck out nine in a game against the Blue Jays. I asked him the next day about what happened in that, that game and he just said my curveball was really on in that game and you know in, in, in the game when we were watching throw against the Phillies that curveball was just nasty he had that finish you know deep in the batter's box so uh, he looked really good with that curveball I think it's a key pitch for him I think it's really what completed him and made him a major league pitcher and that's hit well to center field Kane makes a play and both runners will move up so now Tampa Bay has two more in the second for a four nothing lead as Jennings drives in his sixth. Those are better find a way to keep that ball out of the hitting zone because the Rays aren't missing. It's another one right down the middle. 
Yeah, we've seen a lot of balls, again, right in that middle part of the plate, middle part of the thigh for the hitter. Kind of where you like it, isn't it, Rex? Got that right, Monty. You guys face each other, by the way? No. I don't believe we did. I never sniffed the on-deck circle when a closer was in the game. <laughs> they were yanking me out. You were long gone Be at before that Before I even got to the on-deck circle, I was looking back. I think just to make sure, associate producer Al Broughton needs to look that up. Jeff Montgomery, Rex Hudler. Mm, You're say, saying no? I'm saying never. Okay. I would have remembered if he hit a home run, I promise you. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Only in a Why? Because you'd have gone home and opened up a vein or something. <laughs> yeah, they might have released him. I saw some of those towering shots. I saw that memorial one for him in uh, in Baltimore. He hit. <laughs> Every once in a while, it was an accident, but there was a lot of guys released after giving up home runs to me. I'll tell you that. Matt Joyce homered in the first inning for the second straight game tonight in about the same spot. Right field. And he hits that run right to Elliot Johnson. And that's the inning. Monty, thank you. We'll check in with you later in the game. Absolutely. Two in the first, two in the second for Tampa Bay for a 4 0 lead. Did in the sixth last night with a two run home run. Short to the ball and plenty of emotion. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. So Kane, Moustakis, and Frank Coor. Jeremy Hellickson got two great plays on defense to begin the first inning. Desmond Jennings running down a ball in left center field. On a ball hit by Alex Gordon, which would have been a double at least. And then Yunel Escobar made a good play on Alcides Escobar barehanded. And now Escobar, a little easier play, and throws out Kane. One down. Jeremy Hellickson got the nickname Silent Assassin when he was in Double A AA and Triple A because he's very quiet. He's got a little dry sense of humor, but he's a quiet guy and shows no emotion at all in the mound. So that's just how I operate when I'm pitching. I don't want to tip any emotions to the hitter. But he did show a little emotion when Jennings made that great catch. 
off of Alex Gordon's bat. He, he went, wow. That's the best curve he's thrown tonight. 0 and 2 on Moustakis. Home run for Moustakis last night. That snapped a string going back to last year of 129 at bats without a home run. And when you're hot, you're hot. With the count 0 and 2, he somehow got to that ball very similar to his first hit last night. Yeah, another off speed pitch. Lobatone wanted it on the ground, and that's where he was going to get it. But Moose just said, you know what? A little bit of a soft step, but he just reached out and extended his arm. Made some contact out in front. Really a good. He's a hit. So he's hitting five in a row now. And last night, in his first at bat against Alex Cobb, the count was 0 and 2, and he about picked one off the dirt and got a base hit to center field. Rancour that caught the Rays by surprise, but he bunts it foul 0 and 1. All right, after exhaustive research, Rex Hudler was 0 for 2 against Jeff Montgomery, including grounding into a double play. Wow, I, I had two at bats off of Monty. Makes me feel good. That? Hey. Maybe it was one of those get some work in days for Monty. <laughs> a blowout game. He hadn't had an appearance in a few days. That's right. That's exactly what it was. Game wasn't on the line. It wasn't very memorable. Monty didn't remember either. Two on Frank Coor, who had two hits last night, a double and a triple. Drove in a run. Last six games, though, Frenchie's seven for 22. Trying to climb up there a little bit. Changeup strikes him out. Ellickson has his first strikeout. So here's another Rays pitcher with a good changeup. And you say, well, I guess that's what they teach. I mean, they all seem to have good changeups, but Ellickson's story is a little different. In 2009, when he was in the minor leagues, he injured his shoulder. And the curveball typically can put stress. On the shoulder, so the Rays for a while didn't allow him to throw that pitch. So that reduced him to fastball changeup. And because he had to rely on it so much, it improved. And he was able to go back to the curveball, but didn't throw it as much because his changeup had developed the way it did. Changeup's one of the best pitches and underrated pitches there is. Fastball, if you got a good one. There's none better. You could place it. You could change speeds on it. Work a lot of different variations off of that. But when you change speeds, tougher. And a tough hop for Longoria, but blocked it, kept it in front of him, and he throws out Salvador Perez. So at the end of two, it's Tampa Bay four and the Royals nothing.
is just falling down into the low 60s already. Hey, with Mother's Day right around the corner, give your mom a special gift she will never forget. You can have Slugger personally deliver a Slugger Gram consisting of Royals earrings, tulips, a t-shirt, tickets, and more. Deliveries are made Mother's Day weekend. Visit royals.com slash slugger to book your gift today. Well, in between innings, I saw the three umpires that are out in the field run in and get their jackets on. Not Ted Barrett, though. He's a tough guy. Former boxer who once sparred with George Foreman. So if you can handle that, I think you can handle a wind out of the Northwest. Yeah, one time in spring training, I was coming from Tucson and in my car, and I looked over, there's about three or four guys on the Harleys, you know, riding their motorcycles, and I looked over and I looked again, and it was Ted Barrett. Coming back on his Harley from, from from the game in Tucson, I I, I I almost swerved off the road. I was pumped to see him. He he thought there's some fan that was just overzealous. Zobrist so flies to Kane. He homered first time up, one down. Mendoza gave up two in the first. Both were solo home runs, and then two more in the second. Evan Longoria with one out and nobody on, and Mendoza struck him out with a curve in the first inning. Scorch to left field. Alex dives, and it's sunk on him and skips all the way to the fence. And Longoria is going to try for three. Alex's throw is just a little bit offline. Mustakas had to back up to get the right hop, and that took him away from the base. And that's the first triple of the year for Longoria. And he wouldn't he wouldn't so sure coming around second base if he was going to go. Now Gordon, he made a great effort on this. Now he tried to alter his glove angle so he could knock it down and keep it from going back. But sometimes when you commit, you go ahead, but that ball was bounced way in front of him. Again, the Royals will bring most of the infield in halfway. At least three of the four infielders. Elliot Johnson will stay back. Or James Loney, who has driven in 11 for the Rays this year. He has driven in 12 for the Rays this year. So Longoria's triple turns into a run, and now Tampa Bay has scored in each of the first three innings, and they lead 5 0. He's just firecracker hot. Anything out over, and he, he's short, and he sees the infield in. That's the perfect at bat there. You don't want to drive that ball right back up the middle. Big hole there. Even if they weren't in, that's going to be a clean knock. You know Escobar hit a soft liner to Elliot Johnson at second base. His first time up, and he takes strike one. Batting at 167. Mustakis, tough hop. Out at second. Johnson to Hosmer for an impressive double play. Wow, he got on top of that throw to Elliot Johnson. He threw a dart over there to first. Moose had a hard time getting out of his glove. Still did it.
second inning. The New York Yankees will be coming to town just once this year, and it's just right around the corner. A weekend series, May 10th through the 12th. It will feature summer fireworks on Friday, a drawstring bag given away by the MLB Network on Saturday, and a royal scarf, which would come in handy tonight. That is for the ladies on Mother's Day. You can get your tickets right now at royals.com or by calling 1-800-6-ROYALS. Jeremy Hellickson pitching with a 5-0 lead. Elliot Johnson, his former teammate, will lead off. Then Alex Gordon and Alcides Escobar. And Ned is trying to ride the hot hand by staying with Elliot. He broke an 0 for 13 in last night's game with a couple of hits, a steal, and a run. There's that double play right here. He turned. Look at how he stayed on top and just threw a dart. What an arm he's got. Loney got a piece of him, too. Used the base as protection there. And Johnson hits it well to right field. And that is gone. His first home run as a Royal. Yeah, that felt good. And a nice quick trot, too. I mean, that's a beautiful swing. Get his team in the game. And Ned, Ned's riding him. Lobatone wants it in, and there it was. Elliot Johnson, you see the little hop? You saw it, Ryan. Yep, hitters will tell you. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> and with that wind blowing hard out there to right, he knew it. Ball one to Alex Gordon, who lost an extra base hit on a great play in left center field by Desmond Jennings. Now, if you were watching last night, and you remember Alex's base hit off the knob of the bat, yes, Alex said, that is the most unique hit of his life, or as he put it, the luckiest hit in his life. Change up, two balls and one strike. I thought it hit right above his left hand. On the handle. And then as a replay showed it. Right off the knob and missed his pinky. He thought about. Well that should have hurt because that's unusual you know. Lots of guys will catch their little pinky on that. And get hit by the pitch. And they'll call it a strike because your hands are part of the bat. And I, but I've never seen that before. He said it hit the knob perfectly. Didn't hit his finger at all. Nothing but knob. Helixson threw him two great changeups in that at bat. One away, and that's Helixson's second strikeout, and both have been with the changeup. He'll use that back to back, sometimes even three times. He's very confident in that pitch, and I told you when it when he's got it going, it, it's going to sink down like a lot of good changeups do. Similar action that James Shields changeup has. Escobar lines it into center field for a one out base hit. And now he's on for Billy Butler and Billy singled in his first at bat. Side ball one. And 
And now Billy slams it into center field. So three hits for the Royals and one run so far in this inning. And the Royals have two on, which is one out. Okay, check a look at Billy's eyes. He didn't line up. Now he waited just to click for that ball to break, and then he stayed right on it, right, right up through the middle. Good swing path. See when that front foot goes down and it's an off speed pitch you try to time that front foot usually for a fastball but when that happens you got to keep the hands back. And he does that. And I'm not sure what kind of sign that was they all got a little something going now. As Joel and money were talking about in the. Pregame show they they all have a little something going now to send back to the dugout. As Miguel Tejada suggested that you know the guys get a little bit more excited about a base hit. Some guys have a planned one and some guys just kind of he, make it up. He didn't even know what to do then Billy. <laughs> so they're all doing something now. And that, that last one he kind of pointed. Upward. And. There were some guys in the dugout shaking their heads saying no Billy that's not you there. One and one on Hosmer. And if you're watching Hyvee Royals live and. Nate Bucati did a report on the background with all the different hand gestures. Just guys showing some excitement when getting a hit and sharing that excitement with the dugout. And then Nate suggested that maybe the announcers jump into the fun and <laughs> and uh, after he what? put on display what his celebration is. Did you get a chance to see that? No swing, two and one. No, I missed it. Maybe you can show go. it. What is that? Is yeah. that is that the Macarena? <laughs> I don't know about that one. The three amigos. That's right. <laughs> three balls and one strike on Hosmer. Well, Mustakis erased a long. Drought of at bats without a home run last night. Hosmer has gone 119. So he is due. And Hellickson giving up the home run to Johnson in this inning. He's allowed six home runs this season in 33 innings. Escobar at second, Butler at first. Three and two. Okay, hey, Hosmer, 294 hitter with a runner in scoring position so far early this year. Royals overall, 316. Good number. One of the reasons why they're over 500 this year. Minus the home runs, they're still finding ways to chip in hits when the guys get in scoring position, and that's a good thing. Any way you can to cross them. Now, three run bombs sure help you get back in games like this, but they'll take them any way they can get them. Ball's not going to go to left too well with that wind. Right field heavy. And a walk to load him up for Kane. Now, Hellickson is a good pitcher. We know that. But he's not coming off a good start. And when he pitched on Thursday at Chicago, he gave up five runs in six innings, and he gave up four walks. And that was the second time this year he's given a five runs in a start. And the Royals down five nothing have a run here in the third and now the base is loaded with one out for Lorenzo Cain. He grounded out to short in the second inning. Lorenzo's one for three with him loaded this year. I'd like to have that pitch back. 0 and 1. Just pulled off at a hair. Better off swinging early in the count with the bases full. Helixson wants to get ahead. With Loney, the first baseman, way back at first base, back from Hosmer. Hosmer can get a little bit bigger lead, get down there and get a piece of that middle infielder. He does hit one on the ground. 
nice save by Lobatone. That saved a run with Escobar at third base. One ball and one strike. Okay, Lobatone, see how he turned that glove. Fingers down. That's a nice job of blocking it and making sure you keep it in front. Not necessarily trying to pick it out of the dirt and catch it. He's just trying to do what he did. Ellickson is really slowed down in this inning. You know, with with the success he's had with his changeup, really can't Lorenzo can't really expect a fastball. He's going to have to guard against that changeup a little bit too. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's what Joe Madden was just saying to his pitching coach Jim Hickey. He is really slowing down, and now he and Lobatone are on the same page, so they're going to talk it over. At times, that's deliberate by the pitcher just to kind of gather himself. Other times, it shows maybe a lack of confidence in the way his stuff is working. Got that right. That's body language for, uh, I'm not so sure right here. Hitters can pick up on that, but then, you know, you, you got to come through with a big hit here and put a little bit of that anxiety on him. But it, you know, make him a little bit more uncomfortable here. Out of the way again, one ball, two strikes. And Lorenzo yelling at himself with both of those foul balls, pitches that he normally drives into right center field. Yeah, that ball got deep on him. You want to get that bat head out sooner. Johnson opened the inning with a home run. With one out, Escobar singled, then Butler singled. Hosmer walked to load the bases. Just outside. Ooh, yeah, that he eyeballed that. With the bases loaded, you can't take one looking. You got to be able to hack. Don't let him send you back. But that was a good take. Again, fouled away. Okay, change up that was elevated. They might try to go back with the fastball on him here because he missed a couple of them but fouled him back. Tells me Lorenzo might be thinking off speed. Well, he's checking out them outfielders. Osmer over there at first base who wants to get down there and break it up. So he's just missing the corners, and Lorenzo has filled out the count. A lot of guys are swinging at that, especially with them loaded up. Boy, that looked a lot closer than it was on the grid. Sure did. Oh, he laid off of that one. And even the Rays, their coaching staff, shaking their heads in the third base dugout. Be the turning point in the game here. Lorenzo is going to step out for a moment. Seemed like Hellickson may have had the right idea. Lorenzo reacted as though he was not expecting a pitch in, maybe looking out over the plate. So we've seen a pitch away, now a pitch in. And another foul ball. And I tell you, Lorenzo hasn't had a bad swing yet on all four of his foul balls. No, and, and, and every one he's fouled off have been elevated. So he's. Hellickson's living dangerously right here. Good seven pitch at bat going. The more you foul off, the more confidence you gain. See if he can capitalize. Hellickson doesn't want to walk him. Moose is on deck. And a foul ball. Didn't mean to do it.
He's got to get with Alex and figure out how to get that ball in play. Yeah. Like oh, that one hit the bat. Yeah, yeah. He, he couldn't get out of the way <laughs> of that. He... Just those batting gloves for a knock up the middle. This is the ninth pitch of the at bat. And it's grounded to short. Escobar, Zobris, close at first, but out. And Kane, frustrated that he just missed so many pitches in that at bat. And slams his helmet to the grass. And the Royals get just one. Five one as we welcome in Royals Vice President Mike Swanson, who is uh, a veteran of the game, so he brought his jacket. I knew it was going to cool down. I didn't think it was going to cool down this quickly. I got a glimpse of Weather Channel before I came down. <laughs> Thanks to uh, the Weather Channel and our radars and our devices on our phones and well, those flags on the Hall of Flame on the Hall of Fame blowing in gave it away for me too. <laughs> From so. that direction, yeah. <laughs> well, Swanee's here to talk about what we have coming up on Friday night. When the Chicago White Sox will be here, and it's one of the most enjoyable things we do every year to benefit Royals charities, the broadcast auction. It's one of the favorite things that everybody does here, and and just putting the uh, the specials together, all the items that fans have a chance to bid on, is so much fun for everybody. And and uh, I work closely on the one with the broadcast experience, where uh, fans can bid on an opportunity to come out and hang out with you guys. Uh, they can sit in the dugout with Ned when he does his pregame uh, meeting with the media and then ask him a couple of questions afterwards and come in after the game's over with. Hopefully it's a W and they can uh, sit in on Ned's postgame and in the interim basically get a tour of the whole facility and, and get to see, get to come out to the TV truck, get to come up in the booth with you guys, get to have dinner with you and HUD, which uh, having dinner with HUD's always an experience anyway. So uh, watch him pound it. And, find, a, uh, find a bib, though. That's Make right. sure. That's right. Keep all fingers away. No, I'm kidding. It's not like that at all. But uh, no, it's, it's a fun night for everybody. You get to see all the personalities that uh, that you listen to and watch on TV uh, nightly. I, I think it's a good time. It's a great bid item. Three balls and two strikes on Luke Scott, and it's a it's a kind of a source of pride for us here in the booth because usually we go neck and neck with the dinner with George, and uh, now that has turned into a, a very special item this year because typically it was coming to the ballpark and hanging out with George in a suite. Exactly. Oh my. That ball needs a hook and in a hurry. Not quite in time. Luke Scott hits the third home run for the Rays tonight and now they have scored in four straight innings against Luis Mendoza. And for Luke Scott who just came off the DL last night that's his first. You know, for obvious reasons, since I'm up here in the booth, I was hoping for a one-two-three inning, and uh, if we could get get a few sales made and then get out of it. But unfortunately, Luke Scott didn't see it that way. 
No, and he got fully extended on that baby. And he drove that and you know didn't need no win for that one. No, we could have used about 10 more mile an hour is what we could have used yeah. from the north. Swanee, we've been saying ever since the information came out on the, the broadcast auction that it's dinner with George Brett on location with a date to be determined. And boy, we got some great news on what and when that's we going to be tonight. We have some information. We can, you can ink it in now and start bidding Friday night. It's going to be you and five of your friends, which is a party of six. It will have the opportunity to have dinner with George at the Capitol Grill down in the Country Club Plaza. The night has been selected. It's Wednesday, May the 22nd. It'll be at 6 p.m. And fans who bid on this and win the bid are going to have the opportunity to hear stories uh, at the Capitol Grill and the, with their award-winning offerings and, and sit down with George, uh, the Royal, former Royals Joe Randa, John Wathen, and Jason Kendall. So, so it's uh, more than a party of six. It's then. more than a party of six. It's going to be a party. And uh, believe me, if you get to sit down at the Capitol Grill with George and all these guys, you're going to be in for a long night of stories and, <laughs> and being regaled in a lot of items. So you will have a blast. This sounds like a great time. I may be sitting at another table just kind of peeking in. <laughs> There'll be a few stories told. There will be. And we thank the Capitol Grill for offering a deal like that, especially the, the private dining room. How about, how about the, the auction item that has the video games played in the clubhouse with Moose and Haas. That, that, was, that was one of that was one of the. Uh, Where did that come from? Well, that came from Moose and Haas. Uh, those guys, uh, you know, Tim Collins, Haas, Moose, Greg Holland, Gerard Dyson, uh, Lorenzo Kane, all those guys. Uh, they, they even travel the video games with them now, and it, it it keeps them out of trouble. It gives them, you know, gives them a little time to relax and. You can see the guys if you get here early enough in the afternoon before they have to go in and do video work and go down in the cage. They, they're getting their game on down in the clubhouse. Some guys are playing cards and some guys are playing the video games. And, but the game's changed a little bit, you know, since since your day in the clubhouse right. uh, back in, when you had an Atari and uh, you were playing yeah. Miss Pac-Man and all that. Nintendo. It's, yeah, it's changed just a little bit. And and for this to be an auction item and have the uh, have somebody bid on it and, and come in and, and hang out with those two guys and. And you know when you say you're hanging out with those two guys, this ball club is so close, and they have so much fun. You're not just going to be with Haas and Moose. You're going to see a lot of the guys. You're going to have a good time with it. Swanee, hey. thanks for stopping by. You're welcome. Thanks, thanks for having thanks me up for here. the uh, the breaking news on the George Brett dinner. I, I still think we have a good shot though for the broadcast experience. Let's do it. We're going to bid. We're going to outbid everything tonight. We got to go after George. Six one Rays. They've scored in four straight innings. Thanks, Mike. Try pasta the Panera way. Live consciously, eat deliciously. And by Ford, see the new F-150 at your Midwest Ford dealer today. 6-1, and that's also close to the temperature. 61 and dropping into the 50s at least tonight. And 
we asked you at the top of the broadcast in our sprint unlimited answers question who is your pick to hit tonight 23 percent going with Alex Gordon all nine got votes the unlimited answers sweepstakes presented by sprint you can vote in tonight's answers poll and enter for your chance to win two crown club tickets to a future Royals game courtesy of Sprint and if you're not familiar with the crown club seats that would be those three rows right behind Mike Moustakis in front of that green concrete barrier wall you are right in the game down there in the air to center field Jennings back and now the wind pushes it in and Moustakis is out number one he's one for two. You know when you get a chance to sit in those seats you can see the break on the ball you know it's a whole different look than when you're sitting up in the stands a little bit higher. That's why I, all the baseball scouts like to sit down low. So they can see the breaking balls they can, they can tell you know, the speed of the fastball a little bit better. Great seats. Nice and comfortable. And we were talking about George last half inning and I don't know if it's his line or if he just uses it quite a bit I heard it first from him but he referred to the dirt rule and that the farther you get away from the infield dirt the easier this game looks and when you get down close like that really begin to appreciate the speed of this game Frank Coor was nicked on that pitch by Hellickson and he'll go down to first with one out. Even as many games as we do, at least once or twice during spring training, I like to try and sit close to the game. And even routine ground balls, I mean, you really have an appreciation of how quickly everything's moving. You get behind home plate, and you'll really be impressed by the velocity that the pitchers are throwing to the hitters. Also, if you get a chance to come a little bit early and watch batting practice, that can be a good experience for you, too. And the lower you get down there, you can see the speed of the ball that comes off of the bat of these guys. Throwing at 60 miles an hour or 55 is right down the middle. And these guys, they, they, they're big and strong and they hit it hard. And, and you're taking ground balls as an infielder out there. There are some times when I just had to say, hey, don't hit me any, any practice balls. I got to watch them off the bat here so I don't get one in the head. It's a fast game. Ball. It 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 hurts. Frenchy is a little bit fortunate. Hit his uniform on that last one, so he's going to get away with a hit by pitch. It's his second of the year, he's been hit. But when they hit your jersey, that's a bonus hit by pitch. No skin. One and one on Perez. He hit a shot to Longoria at third. In the second inning, and Longoria first blocked it. Didn't try and catch it; just used his body as a wall, and then picked it up and threw out Perez. Two and one. Now defenders will tell you that they love playing behind a guy that throws strikes and a guy that works quickly. And Hellickson has thrown strikes tonight but he's not working quickly at all. But that hasn't. Harmed the defense they've made. Several. Impressive plays behind him including. Turning a double play to help. Hellickson get out of the third he was in a mess with the bases loaded one out. Two balls two strikes. Tell you that play Jennings made in the first inning off of Gordon's bat turned the momentum back in his favor. Because if that falls, that's a double, maybe a triple. Three balls, two strikes. And if that play wasn't impressive enough, 
And Hellickson got a good play on the infield against the very next hitter with their Escobar throwing out our Escobar. Broken bat. And that ball is just dying in left center field, and it will drop for a base hit. So, with one out, a hit batter and a single, and the Royals have two on with one out. Yep, that win knocked that down for Salvi. Let's take a look at those defensive plays our ATT U verse reverse replays. And this was the first batter that Hellickson oh, faced. Man, he ran a long way too. He's playing Gordon to pull a little bit. Hellickson said, "Thank you for that." And in this bare hand play here by Escobar, you know, then that was fantastic. Pick your pitcher up with those plays. And a fastball strike to Elliot Johnson, facing his former Rays teammate for the first time. Johnson took him deep. Into the right field bullpen. His first as a Royal. And then with one out, the Royals loaded the bases. But after a long battle with Lorenzo Kane, Hellickson was able to get a ground ball and a double play. That's down and away. One ball, one strike. Yeah, Ned Yost went with Elliot Johnson in last night's game against his former team because he Ned knows from experience that when he was a player for Milwaukee and then he got traded to the Braves and then they played Milwaukee he wanted to play against his former team so badly that and he didn't get a chance to play for him and it, and it made him upset at the manager he was upset for a while that the manager wouldn't let him play against his former team so he remembers that from his playing days and went with Elliot Johnson last night and it was a pretty good call. That's why he's back in there today. He's already homered. Still one and two. Now you don't have to have played Major League Baseball, you know, to to be a, a manager. There's been some successful managers that never played big league ball. They played pro ball, but they never played major league ball. And just they're successful. But Ned knows the feel of his players. It change up, fooled him. Johnson not happy. Ellickson's third strikeout, all swinging on a change up tonight. So it's Alex with two on and two out. Lost the extra base hit on the play by Jennings we just showed you. And then he was the strikeout victim of Ellickson back in the third on a change. And into right field for a base hit. So Alex continues to hit with runners in scoring position. He makes it a 6 2 game. He was hitting 500 with runners in scoring position before that hit, and he drives his, his team leading 18th run of the year. All right, to open our show for tonight, we showed a graphic of the come from behind win so far. But the Royals have had in their 14 wins nine comeback wins. Okay. And 10 different players with the go ahead runs batted in. And that tells these guys that even though it's six to two and it's in the fourth or fourth inning here. They have a chance to win this game. So not one guy in there doesn't believe they can't win. And if you don't have any comeback wins then you're you're a little bit like oh well let's just sit back and get beat here. But it's not the case this year. Ball one two Alcides Escobar and you know some of the other things we discussed at the top of the show the similarities in some of the major stats I and mean, you think the Royals have pitched way better this year than they did in the first month well not necessarily are they scoring more runs 
by May 1st this year compared to last year. Well, yeah, three tenths of a run per game. But the hits they're getting are coming in big spots, and they've just developed a knack for winning games and a knack for scoring late, which they did not do last year at this point. And the Royals are the only trail Boston and Detroit as far as hitting with runners. Well, this is batting average altogether, their third, but much better than that with runners in scoring position. Our Toyota League leaders for tonight. Escobar pulls it on the ground, and Longoria is going to flip it over to second to end the inning. So the Royals trying to chip away. They get a two out RBI from Alex Gordon to make it 6 2 at the end of four. Catch up with Joe Madden, one of the unique managers in this game who believes in playing the game the right way, but also feels like you got to have fun. He says, I like the nonsense. It's good. Don't take yourself so seriously. So he had a DJ in the clubhouse already this year, a magician. He's got, you know, some guests from the zoo, and recently he called it a chill out day and had penguins in the clubhouse. So you never know what Joe Madden's going to do, but he says that you've got to play this game hard. And recently it was Joe Madden gnome night. And that gnome, by the way, guys, has traveled with the real Joe Madden on this trip. I saw it in the visiting clubhouse in his office today. He said it was in the plank position. It was laying face down on his desk. He said he'll stay there for now. He's two and three in this position on this road trip. It's about winning series, not winning games. He said, guys need to be professional, but don't think you're so hot. Have a good time. It's just a game. I'll tell you what, that's worked for him in Tampa Bay. Bruce Chen's first pitch is lifted to Kane in center field, and Matt Joyce is out. Joyce one for three with a home run. Oh, and Joe Madden took over the then Devil Rays. They were one of the worst teams in Major League Baseball. Now they're one of the best. And over the last five years, Joe Madden's Rays. Remember the those lowly Tampa Bay Devil Rays in that no win situation in the American League East dismal. They have averaged 92 wins over the last five years. Only the Yankees and the Phillies have done better over the last five years than the Rays. I would have bet you anything and everything I own. If you have told me 10 years ago that someday. Tampa Bay Rays would be one of the dominant forces in the American League East. No one can believe it, but when you draft right and you get them pitchers, it's going to be a test of the French. And he passes the test in foul territory to get Zobrist. Now, you spent some time around Joe Madden because prior to getting the Rays manager job, he was the bench coach for the Angels. That's right. In 1994, Buck Rogers was the manager for the Angels. 
and he got fired after the first month and Marcel Lastman came on and he was a longtime angel pitching coach Marcel Lastman friends with Gen then general manager Bill Bavese and Joe Madden had been in their farm system for years. He was a coach down there and La Latchman brought Madden up to the big leagues and when Joe came up he totally changed the whole climate in our clubhouse because he started it's the first time we were going with computer readouts and the computer had just come in and in baseball most of the time when you would look on the board as a player in spring training you'd go up there and look and it would it would have in writing stretching at 805 PFP at 930. You know, game, extra field, everything was just written. And he started bringing these computer readouts of sheets that, 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 that had all this stuff on it. And we had to go up and study that for 10, 15 minutes and say, what? What? You know, so Joe, he, he, he changed the environment. He had a lot of enthusiasm. Some of the veterans were a little bit leery of that. And I said, no, 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 that's a welcome thing, guys. We need a coach with some energy. So they, he was the first base coach. And what and he had a stopwatch and he'd like to time the hitters our hitters when on contact all the way to first base he would time them and then he would put the top three times on the board the next day on this computer sheet and you know we, we started feeding off of that we started competing guys started hustling more down that line because they wanted the top time and so you know he made it fun just like he's done with the Rays. so since he evolved and Longoria has his second hit. He's on with two outs. So let's go back to Joel. You know, the interesting thing about Joe Madden, Ryan and Rex, is is that you know he says he likes the nonsense and he doesn't believe in you know being so serious about stuff, but he said it it only works with the right guys. You you need players that are gonna be professional. This isn't just you know, a bunch of hoodlums in there that don't care. They've got to show up on time. They've got to get their work in. We've seen Joe Madden in the past pull guys out of games or heard about that that weren't hustling. So he believes in all of those fundamentals, but he just has a different belief in the way of going about, you know, living the everyday grind of baseball. Fouled away by Loney, 0 and 1. And that's where a creative mind comes in from the top, from the boss. Lots of times, you know, James Shields, you know, different characters in the clubhouse will develop that environment in the clubhouse. But when a manager does, it's free game. Guys feel loose. They feel a little bit more loose. Hey, if the boss says so, we can do it. Loney is one for two with an RBI. One ball, one strike. You know, and there, there are two ways to go about disciplining or or setting down guidelines for a team there could be a very strict manager where you've got a whole handbook full of do's and don'ts or Joe Madden who allows the players to police themselves and trust that they will make good decisions because if they make bad decisions it's going to affect their playing time it might affect how long they're with the organization but he really trusts his players So I asked Longoria, as Joe Madden's famous for setting the dress code for a certain trip. I said, have, have you guys done anything special early this year? He goes, yeah, you know, Joe usually lets us know three or four days before the trip so guys can go buy the stuff or get the get the, the right clothes that they all wear uh, on the road. And he said that Majestic made some Letterman's jackets for him, real nice Letterman's jackets. And he said they all sported those. They all wore them on a trip. You know they have different outfits for for different occasions and and that kind of keeps it lively and before a road trip they always go what's the theme going to be and nowadays for a night game I mean some people get to the ballpark 11 noon 1 o'clock he has his American Legion days referring to the youth baseball league as Loney strikes out where guys aren't allowed to get there until about an hour and a half before the game. <laughs> Beautiful. Scoreless fifth inning for Chen and the first scoreless inning for the Rays tonight.
Arlington Texas. Chris Sale pitching for Chicago. Jeff Baker. Takes him deep to left field. And now a 2 2 tie in the top of the sixth inning. White Sox at 10 and 15. The Rangers are 17 and 9. And the White Sox will follow the Rays into Kauffman Stadium. Tampa Bay, the series with Tampa Bay wraps up tomorrow with a day game. And then Chicago here Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. The Rays, they head out to Denver. Maybe the weather will change for them. Be a little bit warmer. It's cold now. Billy Butler is single twice. So he's tacked on 19 points to his batting average. And Hellickson misses inside. Two balls and no strikes. So the Royals are down by four. But it hasn't been easy for Hellickson. He's given up seven hits and he's hit a batter. So eight base runners for the Royals in the first four innings. But they have left six on base. And now Hellickson falls behind 3 0. It is currently 56 degrees at the ballpark. Three and one. I so believe I saw 85 on my car thermometer when I was driving in today. You know, you were right earlier. I mean, early in the weekend, last weekend, you were saying that we'll see spring, summer, and winter in one week here. <laughs> and you're right on so far. Pretty good chance for rain at some point tomorrow and then talking about Thursday night into Friday rain and snow. Big swing by Billy still three balls and two strikes but back to your point by the time we get to Sunday it's going to be in the low to mid 60s again. Some of the prepared fans tonight. And we were talking about the ones earlier that left their house and it was nice and warm and thought they're going to have a nice, comfortable evening at the ballpark, showing up in shorts, short sleeves. Billy lines it to left field. That's his third hit. And he'll jog into second base with a leadoff double, his third of the year. Billy needs a, a big night like that. Get that average back up there where he belongs around the 300 mark. Okay, now he knew he didn't hit it enough to get it out of the park, so he really got on his horse. He says, I want to get me a double here. Okay, now he's got a new one now. Oh, looks like a little air guitar he just gave. <laughs> he's been creative. He's trying to find the one that works for him, I think. It's a thing to do in the game today. I mean, a lot of teams are doing this. And the Rays, we haven't seen much of it, but they do a, a mock bow and arrow, which goes back to Fernando Rodney. Is that how he celebrates his saves? I think so. And, you know, of course, the Rangers. Yeah, I've been doing that for several years now, doing little things. But Billy, so far in his third hit, now he, he's got a little air guitar working right there. <laughs> he had a couple other ones in his other hits. And don't let his age fool you. Billy's 26, but he's he's a throwback when it comes to music. One and two on Hosmer, so he might have been doing a. A little Leonard Skinner there. You never know. Could have been. Now there, there's Longoria. Here, here's his. There you go. There's the arrow. Reached behind his head to get the arrow. Right. Right, right on. And, then, and he did it calmly with no expression on his face. Osmer has flied to center and he has walked.
foul tipped a breaking ball down and in and strikes out and that is four for Hellickson. And now look at tonight's AT&T trivia question. What team led the American League in comeback wins last season? Well, I know who uh, led the league in one run games, all the close games, and all the extra inning games. How many of those were comeback victories? I'm talking about the Baltimore Orioles who had a a record season as far as one run games go one run victories. I'm going to guess the Oakland A's. Jeremy Hellickson's two biggest outs tonight. Are when he got. Lorenzo Kane to ground into a double play in the third inning. And now Lorenzo gets him here in the fifth. So Butler will score. Kane wants a triple. And he's in there with an RBI. It's a 6 3 game. And that should come in no surprise, huh? Because he just missed a few pitches in his last at bat against Helix. With him loaded up. That would have been nice if he could have done that then. But hey, look. Chipping away little by little. A mistake was made. You see it in the middle of our Fox Tracks box. And Lorenzo put on a nice inside out swing on that. Looks like he was planning to drive it that way. Thirteenth RBI on the season for him. And now the Moose calls with a runner at third and one out. And line to center field. Jennings had to go back to get it. And Moustakis makes it a two run game. All right, Moose is on the comeback. Squaring up that baseball. And so are the Royals. Here they come. A nice slow take back with his hands. Got to get something going back to come forward. And hit on Jennings almost played that into extra bases there in center field. Tough ball to judge, but that wind knocked it down. And Frank Coor chasing a low pitch. And Escobar has it go off his glove. The wind was really helping out the Rays there. I think when Frank Coor first made contact, he thought it was going to end up in the seats, but the wind kept it on the track. Can really very difficult play right there for a backhander. You're right, the wind kept in it. Now, there's a lot of elements to every game in baseball, unless you're indoors. I mean, there's not a lot of elements to an indoor facility, but hitters will tell you that the wind is the thing that they hate the most, unless it's blowing straight out. That affects the ball, it affects everything. 0 oh 2 on Frank Hoor. He was hit by a pitch in the fourth inning and scored on Alex Gordon's two out RBI single. One ball, two strikes. Even when Hellickson had a 5 0 lead, just never got the feeling that he was in, in control of the game. Been working around base runners all night, and the Royals have scored four runs in the last three innings. Still one ball, two strikes. And that third inning, when he threw 25 pitches, that's the inning the Royals would like to have back. They got one run on Johnson's home run. And they had the bases loaded with one out, but Hellickson got a ground ball and a double play and got out of it. Still one and two. Mm -hmm. 
Struck him out with a fastball. Five for Hellickson, but the Royals continue to chip away. Kane and Moustakis drive in runs in the fifth, and the Royals are just down by two. the sixth inning we hope to join us for the first summer fireworks of the season that's coming up Friday against the White Sox day after the game for a fireworks show courtesy of hy B and Pepsi plus it's buck night hot dogs peanuts and small soft drinks are just one dollar go to royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets for summer fireworks and buck night second inning for Bruce Chen Rays scored all six of their runs against Mendoza in the first four. And then Chen took over in the fifth and pitched the first scoreless inning for a Royals pitcher tonight. And now he's ahead of Escobar 0 and 1. One ball, one strike. Escobar has popped a second and grounded into a double play. Bruce doing what he normally does. It's especially important tonight as it's getting cold down into the 50s. Working quickly. Working quickly and changing speeds, arm angles, location, everything. He'll throw the kitchen sink at you. And he's a good, a, a, a nice contrast between the hard throwers that Ned has in the bullpen. Escobar has a leadoff single. Now both teams have nine hits. That's Escobar's first hit tonight. I want to remind you again, also coming up on Friday, our Royals Charities broadcast auction. And one of those items includes going to Worlds of Fun with Bruce Chen, who is Worlds of Fun. You and two friends can experience all the thrills with a VIP package. One of Kansas City's hot spots for the kids, for the whole family. Worlds of fun. And that also includes four Kia Diamond Club tickets. So not just the Worlds of Fun, but tickets to a game and a premium parking pass. Two on Luke Scott. So the world's a fun date and a game will be mutually agreed upon. And of course, it's always weather permitting. And if you weren't with us earlier and you've been hearing us talking about the different auction items all week, we just found out that the Capitol Grill on the plaza has stepped up big for the Royals and for Royals charities. That's where, if you're the winner, you will have dinner. With George Brett.
outside one ball two strikes you and five friends dinner with George Brett and some of his friends and by the way that would be Joe Randa John Wathan and Jason Kendall in a private dining room at the Capitol Grill on the plaza some great items it's coming up on Friday two balls two strikes on Luke Scott. Side three and two. Escobar has only attempted one stolen base, and he was thrown out. Royals the last two years and Salvador Perez has a lot to do with this. They have really shut down the Rays running game at least against the Royals down and away for ball four. So Scott comes back after being behind no balls two strikes and Tampa Bay has two on with nobody out. I can remember and you can too going into Tropicana Field when they had Carl Crawford and B.J. Upton and the race could hit for power and would just be zipping around the bases. I mean, it was just never a comfortable game. The Rays now in their last seven games against the Royals have had just four stolen bases. Well, you know, he's missed the last four games before coming into this series with some right hamstring tightness, so I wouldn't expect him to be running. So two on nobody out to Lobatone. He walked and scored in the second inning and he's grounded out. I wouldn't put it past Joe Madden to bunt here with nobody out. Osmer coming in on the right side and I think Bruce Chen he wasn't trying to pick off Escobar he's trying to get Lobatone to tip his hand. And that means you know see if he was going to square around to bunt so they get a little better idea. And he will square around and he will bunt it foul. Good, good time to bunt, you know. Get, get a couple guys in the scoring position. You know the Royals are going to come back. They have been all year long. They believe they can win. So move the runners. Bunt it back to Bruce, but he'll play it to first. Johnson covers, and Lobatone gets Escobar to third and moves Scott up to second. And that'll bring up Kelly Johnson, who doubled in a run in the second inning. He's one for two. Perez came up throwing again. If you were with us last night, we were reminding you that Salvador Perez two years ago made his big league debut in St. Petersburg against the Rays and he almost threw for the cycle if you will. He picked off a runner at first he picked off a runner at third and he almost picked off a runner at second in his major league debut. No balls and two strikes so the Rays will never forget that. And when they get to a base they pretty much drop anchor. Yep, and that goes around even in the team meetings. So in case you don't know. We'll tell you be careful. Still 0 2 on Johnson. Now Sal wants to go out and. 
discuss the 0 2 pitch with Bruce. Johnson has some power. He has three home runs this year, but three years ago he had a huge season with Arizona. He had 26 home runs and had 36 doubles. He doesn't look like a guy that's going to hit 26 home runs, but he did. One ball, two strikes. He's wiry strong. Came up through the Braves minor league system originally with Jeff Francoeur. You look at him squinting up there at the plate because it's cold now and the wind's blowing. Very tough to see your eyeballs dry out in the cold weather. Look at him. It's almost like it's a sunny day out there with he's squinting his eyes. Trying to keep the wind up. Across the knees, he got the call. Well, Bruce needed a strikeout, and he got it. And there are two outs. You see, it's going to take some good pitching here to get out of this jam, and he just put it right where he wanted it. Just keeping it out of the middle. Now, Ned, he's coming out to talk about strategy here when it comes to Jennings. Jennings is coming up with first base open. Ned's probably saying, hey, look, uh, you know, what do you want to do? You want to put him on and, and force him out at any base? You got Joyce coming up who's a left handed batter. Face him. So sometimes managers will come out and they'll give the options to a veteran pitcher like Bruce. Jennings, and it's not a big sample size, but he's hitting lefties a little better than righties. He is 0 for 3 in the pass. Against Bruce Chen. Second and third, two down. And Bruce jumps ahead with strike one. Jennings struck out twice against Mendoza, who went four and gave up all six Tampa Bay runs. Jennings also had a sack fly. Strike two. Strikes. The inning began with a single, then a walk, a sack bunt, but runners at second and third with one out. Chen just got a big strikeout against Johnson and now ahead of Desmond Jennings. And that's Bruce Chen. And a little emotion with a pump of the fist. Second and third, one out. Bruce gets two strikeouts against Johnson and Jennings. Oils are down by two to the bottom of the sixth.
third inning, Elliot Johnson says, look, you guys traded me, and I'm not real pleased about it, but I'm happy with my new team. Take that. Fourth inning, Gordon comes up and chips one in. Slowly but surely, the Royals start to creep back in this game, just down two runs, and they weren't done. Fifth inning, Billy Butler says, okay, I'll get it started. I'll get a double. Lorenzo Cain says, I'll get you in. I'll better you by one base. He gets a triple. And then Moose, nice sacrifice fly, brings him in. So here we are, six to four. Bruce Chin doing his thing, holding the opponents down until his guys can muster enough wins. This is the formula of how you come back. That the pitching's got to hold down the opponents. And we got a new lefty. Chevy call to the bullpen. This is Jake McGee with Perez, Johnson, and Gordon coming up. And McGee throws a strike to Sal. So Hellickson. Pitches the minimum to qualify for a win. He never was in control of the game, even with a big lead. And the Royals left six on base in his five innings. And a good start to the six. Two hits for Salvador Perez. He had four hits all year against Tampa Bay last season. And he already has four hits in the first two games of this series. Our Sonic Slam inning contestant is Chris Hash from KCMO. The Royals hit a home run this inning. Chris will win $100. That's because Mike Moustakas' home run last night was worth $2,300. So that cleared the pot. If the Royals had a grand slam out of the park in this inning, Chris wins $25 grand from Sonic and the Royals. Yeah, I bet the Royals are happy to see Hellickson leave and McGee is going to come in here. Ooh, not a bad idea to bunt for a base hit there. McGee's got a fastball. He'll, he'll rush it up there anywhere from. The low 90s to the mid 90s. He's got a slider, and he'll also cut his fastball a little. So he's got a little bit more depth to the slider when he wants to. He'll add and subtract speeds to that pitch. So after that little bunt attempt there, Longoria, he's going to go back. The third now he's going to creep back in again. And he's going to bunt again, and a push bunt. Loney catches it on the fly, but. Perez picked that up and was able to dive back and avoid a double play. Okay, he tried the third baseline. He got too much of the ball here this time. And he was doing that for a base hit. It wasn't like a sacrifice attempt, but the barrel was down below his hands. And when that happens, you're going to pop it up. Keep that barrel up above the hands to direct the ball downward. You might have had a chance to move a runner anyway. Alex, one of the best in the league with runners in scoring position, singled in Frank Coor in the fourth. Fouls the pitch away from McGee. And Alex lost an extra base hit on perhaps the best defensive play of the game tonight when Desmond Jennings ran from center field. Into deep left center field and made a backhand play to take at least a double away from him. One ball, one strike. Okay, on contact, I'm sure Gordon thought he had an extra base hit. You got a blazing center fielder that can really fly. Turns that into an out. Almost hit him. Two and one. are tied for second in the major leagues with nine come from behind victories and tonight trying to come back from a couple of five run deficits they have been down five nothing and six one broke his bat and drops it into right center field Perez stops at second and the tying run is on with one out. Alex is the kind of guy that's going to give his his guys in the dugout a little sign. A 
Do you do you think he is? That's not quite his style. No, is it? no. I don't think. Well, uh, there it is, right there. He's his sign is a squint. Yeah. He chews his gum once and he squints. Salvi didn't give him any love in the dugout either. I think they're they're more focused on their comeback attempt here. And now Escobar, who did some of his best work last year against the Rays, hitting about 430. One for three tonight with a single to center field. Outside strike one from McGee, hard throwing lefty. That was 95 miles an hour. Yeah, he's got a, a short little arm stroke here. He kind of short arms the ball. Ball gets on you in a hurry. Eski likes to drive that ball to the right side. See if he can get something out that way. Yeah, he says I like that, but that's a little too far off the dish. Is through the right side. Perez will be held as Joyce has a good arm and he was shallow in right field. And once again, the Royals have it all lined up as they did in the third inning. Bases loaded, one out. All right, I knew he was going to look out there to see if he could get a pitch. And sure enough, look at those eyes. Stays right on the ball, head barely even moved. Give a ball outside on that outer half. He knows how to do it. Shorten it up and get it by that second baseman. Now they've got action. Oh, Jim Hickey out to the mound, joined by the entire infield. Trying to figure out what to do with Billy Butler, who is three for three with a run scored. I guarantee you, Hickey said. Look, keep the ball down and away from Billy, and maybe he'll try to pull it and roll it into a double play. That's what Hickey's trying to get for Jacob McGee to do to it. So two singles, a double, and a run scored. He's only faced McGee once, and McGee struck him out. Okay, cutters, sliders in. Well, that pitch was in. Now, normally when you say, you know, hitters only face a pitcher once, you figure, well, he doesn't know a whole lot about this guy, but Billy has amazing recall. I bet if you pulled him aside right now, he could go through the, the whole pitching sequence that one time he faced Jake McGee. Singles from Perez, Gordon, and Escobar. Tying run at second base with one out. Royals now have 12 hits tonight. 0 oh 2. He at 96 with that fastball. It's just a little bit tardy on it was Billy Swing. So McGee might try to get him off the plate here. Billy, you saw the career numbers with him loaded up. Just one slam he hit that earlier in Philly this year. He'll take a lousy single, try to tie it. And a shot back to McGee. Everybody had to freeze, and the out that he takes is to first. Well, there wasn't a whole lot of speed going from third to home. Or home to first. And right now, the Rays' biggest concern is whether McGee is okay. I thought if he was going to get one out, he'd come to the plate, but he went to first, and it's a one run game. Wow, too bad. He stuck his glove out there. That would have been a clean single at the, up the middle. Now they're, they're checking to see. I thought it hit his glove in the open part of it, maybe up, up in the palm. Yeah, it hit him in the palm of his hand. Okay, but he had plenty of time to, to just turn and get. The runner at home, and you can see Lobatone. He's, he's yelling at him. 
Escobar is throwing to Lobatone. But he wasn't paying attention. He just wanted to get it out there. Now there's two, but still more damage could be done. So Butler gets an RBI is 16. And now the tying run is at third. Go ahead, run at second for Hosmer. 0 for 2 with a walk. This is a little bit better matchup for Hosmer, even though this guy throws hard. Hosmer, uh, uh, more, a little bit more used to hitting lefties that have big breaking balls. So he's coming, going to come after him. And so far on the season, in 15 at bats, Hosmer has four hits off lefties, a couple RBIs. I'd like to add to that one here. It's nice, easy, short swing on something up. Had a good swing. Scored the game's first five runs. The Royals have scored the game's last four runs. Ninety-seven miles an hour. One ball, two strikes. He's going to try to power through Hosmer. Because I got one by him, I might get one by him again. Take your chances. Left side. And Escobar bobbles it. The Royals tie the game. Remember how cold it's getting all of a sudden. Now the gloves getting hard. Escobar hit him in the palm in the dead part of the pocket there. I mean, it's not in his pocket. It hit him in the palm and it just bounced right out of there. Escobar saw it up there at third base. Gordon comes home to score to tie the game. And here they come. Simple formula. Stay steady. Stay at your approach. See balls you can hit. Don't try to hit for the downs. And but the pitching by Bruce has been able to. Help him get back in it. Pitching two nice shutout innings. And all that good defense early in the game for the Rays, and now a poor decision when McGee went to first instead of home on Butler, and now an error. Charge to Escobar. Now, for a moment, Lobatone stood up and put his right hand out with four fingers, meaning intentional walk. And then, after thinking it through, the Rays decided to pitch to King. I'd already written. Intentional walk in my scorecard. Lorenzo is one for three. And that's blooped into left center field. And it's going to fall for a base hit. The Royals take the lead as Escobar comes down from third. And Kane has driven in two. Royals again have the confidence no matter how many runs they get down to peck away peck away peck away now that wind helped that one too knocked it down so the change of weather here in Kansas City so far has fallen in the Royals favor. Okay, now Mike Moustakis who has driven in a run. Has a five game hitting streak and 203 never looked better to him. Had his average up over 200 finally here on May the 1st, and McGee misses down and away for ball one. And one of his outs tonight was well hit a line drive sacrifice fly to center field. So the last three hitters, a line drive back to McGee, which he dropped and went to first instead of home, an error, and a bloop RBI. Came when it looked like for a moment the Rays weren't going to pitch to him. Bruce has hit the ball hard all every time up. He's got a lot of admirers out there. Down 
One and away. Two balls and no strikes. Royals were down five nothing when they batted in the bottom of the third. They scored a run. The Rays came right back with a run in the fourth for a six one lead. Royals answered in the bottom of the fourth. They scored two in the fifth and now three in the sixth. And that will land in the crowd behind the third base dugout. It's an empty seat and ends up back on the field again. Two and one. Stockis hung in there as long as he could and then realized it wasn't a breaking ball. I'm telling you, when Hellickson left the game, the Royals said, Good. Get him out. He was tricking us a little bit too much. Bring in somebody that's firm. And that's exactly what Joe Madden did. He, he brought in the kid McGee. Fastball, slider, doesn't have a big curveball that he uses. So really, you can look hard, hard, hard. That's what they've been doing. Two had a good swing. Osmer at third reached on an air. Kane at first drove in the go ahead run. Kane runs and Mustakas takes ball four and they're loaded up for Frank Coor. Second consecutive night, Royals have batted around. That's going to be it for Jacob McGee. Moose is locked in right now. That pitch wasn't too far off the plate. He's really seeing the ball well. Former Royal Kyle Farnsworth jogging in from the bullpen. Jeff Francoeur coming up. Bases loaded, two down. Royals lead by one. Royals on the comeback. They changed pitchers from Hellickson to McGee. And so far, the Royals have liked it. They got Hellickson out, and they're going to work. Escobar, nice base hit the outfield. Oh, that would have tied the game up with that base hit had it gone through, but they'll take one. Hosmer says, all right, I'll test Unil Escobar, and Uni booted it. And then Lorenzo Kane jammed him, and the win knocked it down right in front of Kelly Johnson. Escobar scores three in the sixth inning. And they're not done. There's two outs. 
A chance for more with them all loaded up with Royals. Got a chance to give Bruce Chin a, a W and possibly more add on here with some, a little bit of insurance. Of course, that's a long way to go before we talk about a W. Hard to believe it's only the bottom of the sixth inning. We've seen but, quite a game already tonight and still three innings to go. Kyle Farnsworth with an ERA over eight. Pitch for the Royals in 2009-2010. 0 and 2 on Frank Coor. It was 0 for 2 tonight, and he has scored a run. Hit by a pitch in the fourth inning by Hellickson, and scored on a single from Alex Gordon. Fastball slider, split finger. Mainly fastball slider, but when he gets you 0 and 2, you never know if that split he's coming. However, Lobaton will have to be on guard because that's a ball that bounces. Hosmer wants to come home with another run. Take him any way you can get him. Frank Cora has faced Farnsworth twice, 0 for 1 with a walk. On the ground, up the middle. Into center field, and that will drive in two on an 0 2 pitch. The Royals have scored five in the sixth inning, and they lead by three. He just can't contain him. Frenzy hitting. Frenzy looking to shorten up his swing with 0 and 2, but that was a mistake by found Farnsworth. Obviously, he just threw an 0 2 cookie right down the middle. Got top spin on it. The rest is history. Steady climb. Hoping for another comeback. And now back to where we started. Salvador Perez, who began the inning with a single and came around to score. Side for ball one. Two hits for Perez, four in the series. He scored on the line shot that Billy Butler hit back to Jake McGee that went in and out of McGee's glove. And McGee decided to go to first rather than home. One ball, one strike. Five runs in the inning. Butler has an RBI. Kane has an RBI. Francoeur has two. One run has scored on the air by Escobar. One and two. Yeah, we've been talking about this the whole game. The fact that the comebacks have happened so much. Nine out of their 14 wins have been come from behind. And when in the first inning, Matt Joyce hit a home run. Just like in last night's game, and then followed up, Ben Zobras hit a home run in the first thing. Do nothing. I was saying, hey, Royals got them right where they want them. And they'll get so confident in there about coming back. That's what they'll be saying in the dugout. They'll be saying, hey, fellas, no sweat. We do this every night. Strike three. Perez strikes out. Nods at home plate umpire Ted Barrett. Ten come to the plate. Five score. Four unearned because of the air. Royals by three.
as Bruce Chen picked up for Luis Mendoza and pitched two scoreless innings after Mendoza gave up six in his four innings. In fact, the Rays scored in all four innings against Mendoza. Two in the first, two in the second, one in the third, one in the fourth, and at that point they had a 6-1 lead, and now the Royals have scored eight unanswered runs. So Collins to face Matt Joyce, Ben Zobrist, and Evan Longoria in the seventh. Bruce Chen hits a scoreless fifth, got into trouble in the sixth, with runners at second and third and one out, and struck out Johnson and Jennings, and that really gave the Royals a lift, and they rewarded Bruce with five runs in the bottom of the six. Yeah, Bruce, fantastic job. You can't make a comeback unless you got some middle relievers that can shut them down. Take Mendoza off the hook. And a strike from Collins to Matt Joyce, who has homered in both games of the series, both times hitting a home run in the first inning. He is one for three. 0 oh and 2. You know, Mendoza, he didn't deserve the loss after his last start 19 days ago. He was a little bit straight up over the middle and elevated at times, you know, because he's a little bit rusty out there, but leave it to his offense to come back and take him off. Collins got to hold him down still. He's got the stuff and the rest of the pin does to win. Look at that curve. Woo. Man, that is what you call a jelly legger. That leg sometimes and on the hitter it'll kind of buckle a little bit. That's a buckler. Look at that starts out about shoulder high heck Joyce. He was trying to get out of the way of it. He thought it was going to hit him. Great depth on that curveball. It's a beauty. And now Zobrist will bat right handed and he fouls the first pitch away. Ooh -wee. Joyce has got to go. I think Collins' his best pitch is his straight changeup after he throws some mid 90s fastballs. He's got a beauty. That curve's good too when it's working. Hit well in the center field, and Zobrist has a two hit game. Okay, that, that was the straight changeup, Brian, and it, it stayed elevated. It was up. You're going to hit a changeup when it's a straight changeup. There's not a lot of movement to his pitch. It's a diversion from his fastball, so when it, but when it's elevated, it's a little bit easier to put into play. Fans vote for the Royals Player of the Month, sponsored by Majestic and Rally House. Vote at Rally House stores and get a chance to go on field and meet the winning player. Fastball is high to Evan Longoria. Collins coming in with the short sleeves when he went out to the bullpen when the game started. It was about 15 degrees warmer than it is right now. Temperatures into the mid 80s earlier today in Kansas City and now we're in the mid 50s heading toward the low 50s. Hit well into right center field. Francoeur and Kane in pursuit, and Francoeur has it go off of his glove. It stays in, and the runners advance to second and third. Wow, Frenchy, he turned and ran. He knew that ball was hit pretty well, but he's getting up. That's good to see. He ran him right into the wall. Good inside out swing. Palm was in and popped right out of there. Oh, great effort. Just couldn't close it down. Loney is one for three. He drove in a run 
back in the third and that run gave the Rays a five nothing lead. Now the Rays are down by three in the seventh inning. Good curve ball for a strike. Okay, so we've seen a couple of balls now that the weather has changed about 30 degrees since it, since it started. Balls have hit guys in the palm of their glove and they've dropped them. Because the leather's hard. Weather makes a difference in the in the game. The conditions. But for it to change from mid 70s to low 50s. That'll do it and windy very windy. When pushing out to right field now. Collins jumps ahead one and two. Bruce Chen last inning. Got out of a second and third and one out with a couple of strikeouts. And Loney somehow got his bat on that ball. And Collins deflects it with his glove and the Rays get one run back. It'll be a hit and an RBI for Loney, his second run driven in in the game. And now it's 9 7. Look at that. I mean, Salvi was already trying to block that ball. Collins, nice effort there, but just couldn't square it up in his glove. Escobar would have had that. But you know, you can't tell a pitcher that. He's trying to field the ball. Okay, and Zobrist, you know, freezing on a liner right there, doing all he's got when he saw the ball down, changes directions. No chance for an out. And here's a very motivated hitter, Yunel Escobar. Nice save by Perez. As the Royals scored five in the bottom of the six to take the lead, Escobar committed an error. And if he made that play, it would have been a one run inning for the Royals. So four unearned runs because of the air. Well, maybe Collins can talk him into grounding into a nice little double play. Here it was right here. Two hopper. Okay. Talked about how cold it is. Hit right in the dead of his glove. Dead spot. He has grounded into four double plays that leads his team. He has Longoria at second, Loney at first. On the corner, one and two. Top for the big bender. Who oh, no, knows? He stayed with the heater. Hosmer backhands. Collins late to cover first base and no double play. And then he has to go diving to keep that ball from going to the screen. Ooh, and he saved a run. And Escobar almost threw that ball away. And Hosmer with an excellent pick. Able to make sure of one out for sure. Nice little backhand pick. Collins was late getting over. He was watching the action. Osmond was nowhere near the base, but the fact that Collins was heads up enough to stick his glove out there, that saved another run, Longoria, from scoring. He stayed with the heater. I thought he might come with something else. 94 miles an hour on that pitch to Escobar. Our Time Warner Cable Ultimate Internet Pitch Speed. So first and third, two outs. And now in the dirt, ball one to Luke Scott, who has hit one of the three Tampa Bay home runs tonight. Luke Scott started the season on the disabled list with the right calf strain. Came back last night, 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts, and now tonight. He is two for two with a walk and a home run.
2 and 0. Looking at Luke Scott's season from last year, as he played his first game last night, he had an 0 for 41 last year. Oh man, that's a killer. Two and two. I mean, that's what 10, 11 games. You know, he probably had some walks or maybe a sack bunt mixed in there. Mix in a doinker. How about a, how about a little infield hit or something? Ted Barrett ain't budging. It's been a strike all night. Luke Scott didn't like it. And he's been short sleeves all night. Ted Barrett. Two and two. And Scott goes the other way, and it's a two run inning for the Rays. So they come back after the Royals got five in the sixth, and now it's nine eight. Hanging breaking ball. Watch where this ends up and it hangs up there. It didn't quite come all the way down. It's very hittable pitch. So Collins gives up two runs four hits. He departs with two on. And it'll be Aaron Crow to face. Jose Lobatone. When we come back. He struck out the first batter, but then gave up four hits to the next five hitters, and Tampa Bay has two in the seventh to make it a one run game. Tim Collins, and now he gives way to Aaron Crow. And we tell you that MLB.com is the only source for live baseball everywhere you go, delivering Royals baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, breaking news, and video highlights. And you can download it right now on your app store. Or text at bat to 31826. So Crow in for Collins. I said Crow had a good start to the inning. Tim Collins had a good start to the inning with that strikeout. The Rays with two in the seventh. And now Crow on to try and put an end to the inning as Jose Lobatone moves over to the left side of the plate. Would rather have him bat left handed against Crow than right handed against Collins. you 
your offense comes all the way back at this one, man. You, you, you can't lose this game. You got to have it. One and two. Got away with one elevated there. Royal scored three runs in the second game of the doubleheader against Cleveland. That was on Sunday. Shut out on Monday. And now they've scored 17 runs in the last two games against Tampa Bay in the dirt. And Escobar will hold at second base and it's two and two on Lobatone. Mendoza went four and allowed six runs. Bruce Chen pitched two excellent innings out of the bullpen as the Royals came back and scored seven runs while he was in the game. And now Collins and Crow here in the seventh. And it's three and two on Lobatone. Runners go and hit hard to the right side. Johnson picks it up in shallow right and throws out Lobatone. Nice play. Good focus. Just get the out. To the bottom of the seventh in a one run game. League and Kansas City can move a half a game ahead of Detroit because they lost to Minnesota today. L.A. Mark Trumbo and Mike Trout going deep. They win five to four. New York won better than Houston. Cano goes deep. Mariano Rivera 11th safe. Cleveland gets their damage done against Cliff Lee. How about Trevor Bauer, the rookie? Five innings, one hit, no runs, but six walks. Clay Buckholtz moves to six and zero oh as Boston rocks Toronto, and Chicago with Chris Sale on the mound. It's the go-ahead home run as of right now from Connor Gillespie. Our Mazda game break takes us to Detroit, the Red Hot Tigers. But there you see the home run by Chris Parmley against Darren Downs. Scott Diamond outduels Annabelle Sanchez. Twins win it 6-2, to two, Ryan. Thank you, Joel. Jamie Wright will pitch for the second time in the series, taking over in the bottom of the seventh. And, man, if we had a wild one tonight, Royals lead by one. And ball one to Elliot Johnson. Tampa Bay scored two in the first, two in the second, one in the third. So they had a five nothing lead going into the bottom of the third inning. The Royals scored a run. Then Tampa Bay scored in the fourth. So they led six one going into the bottom of the fourth. Johnson bunts foul. Royals got a run in the bottom of the fourth, two in the fifth, 
five in the sixth, and four of those runs were unearned and led nine six. And you figure that that just took the heart right out of the Rays, losing that big lead, but they come back in the seventh and they score two. Two from Jamie Wright to Elliot Johnson, who hit his first home run as a Royal back in the third inning. Hit it to right field off of Jeremy Hellickson. He is one for three. Now, when Wright went out to that bullpen before the game, he didn't have any sleeves, probably didn't even have a coat. I don't think they realized it was going to drop that quickly here, the temperature. So I'm not sure if Wright's a sleeve guy or not, but sometimes the weather will catch you off guard. But he has pitched in Colorado for the Rockies. Brewers, Royals, Rangers, Indians, Mariners, Dodgers. Still two and two. Remember a long time ago in this game, Elliot Johnson homer in his first at bat back in the third. Breaking ball, no argument from Johnson. One down. All right, let's see who. Earlier we asked you a sprint. Who is your pick to hit tonight? Okay. Not too many guys on Lorenzo Kane. That was my pick. And that's what they did. 14 hits in all, and they're not done. You hope. Brian, you didn't make a selection, did you? I'll be making my selection when the game's over. <laughs> That's not fair. Two hits for Alex, an RBI, and a run scored. Alex has two more hits tonight with runners in scoring position. And his average was 500 with runners in scoring position before the game. One and one. He's now hitting 520 with runners in scoring position. Oh man, he in fuego. Money man. Good change up. One and two from Jamie Wright. I tell you, it's six foot six, two thirty. Like Jamie Wright is. He's got a great frame and, and he's got all these pitches too. A whole bunch of them. He's a veteran guy, been around a long time, and he knows how to change speeds and locate. He's baffling. Baffled Elliot Johnson. Now he's got Gordy with two strikes. That's a nice little jam shot right there. Now I'm sure Gordon was trying to use the knob of his bat. Like last night, but he'll never do that again. I'll be happy to tell you that, Ryan. I almost guarantee you he'll never get a hit like he did last night off the end of his knob. Of his bat. Just outside, trying to see that breaking ball like that. You can't give up on it. Elliot Johnson did. He saw it. That big curveball that struck him out. He saw it and then he gave up on it because he came back down. Almost the identical pitch here on Gordon, but it was just a little bit off. Loney comes way off the line and a good feed to Jamie Wright for the second out. I mentioned Jamie Wright's had a nice long career, mostly as a reliever. You go back to the mid 90s, and after Colorado had moved into Coors Field and they were having difficulty finding pitching, he was a bright light in their farm system, but had some pretty serious injuries. He had his knee operated on three times in 13 months, he had a small tear of his rotator cuff. 
He had a cartilage tear in his shoulder. He had elbow surgery. He was their first round pick in 1993. Grew up in Oklahoma City and his favorite team was the Royals and had a chance to play for the Royals twice. His father is from originally from Hutchinson, Kansas. Oh and two on Escobar. He has two hits tonight and a run scored. What do you got on that? Got a Hall of Famer on the left. And Fizz singing tunes on the right. Steve Fizziok. Denny Matthews. Denny's got his windows. He has his window closed. I don't blame him. Fizz was prepared with a warm coat. Escobar strikes out, so Jamie Wright comes out of the bullpen and gets the Royals in order. Royals need six more outs on defense to take game two and complete this comeback. They lead 9-8. Ford for the best deals on Ford cars and trucks visit thoroughbredford.com What a crazy day first of all the weather and there's another Royals fan who thought he was gonna have a nice warm comfortable night at the ballpark and it was in the low 80s mid 80s and some parts of the metro area today and now we're right around 50 degrees. Now as far as the game goes the Royals have been down five nothing and six one and they have led nine six Aaron Crow got the final out of the seventh so he'll stay on for the eighth nine one and two hitters coming up for Tampa Bay beginning with Kelly Johnson no balls and two strikes okay that's the Aaron Crow slider right there the location that's his money pitch. Still 0 and 2. Now you, you said it's 50, but with that wind blowing like it is, I'm going to say the wind chill is a little bit colder than that. One ball, two strikes. It's been very interesting watching the radar. I mean, there's rain. I mean, just to the west of here. And the uh, the moisture is coming up from the south and it is going straight north as if it's riding up state line road. Just inside and now two and two on Johnson. So the rain is not supposed to hit Kauffman Stadium until around midnight. And there's a good chance for rain tomorrow. 
Got that call. A good start to the eighth inning for Aaron Crow. As Kelly Johnson strikes out for the second time tonight. It was a no doubter. Johnson just went right back to the dugout. And now Crow pitches to Desmond Jennings. And he has already struck out three times tonight. He struck out twice against Mendoza. And then Bruce Chen struck him out for a huge out in the sixth inning. Jennings also has a sack fly. Down and away, one ball, one strike. You talk about big outs for the Royals tonight when they've been on defense. Bruce Chen working around a second and third and one out in the sixth inning. And that really pumped up the offense because in the bottom of the sixth, the Royals scored five. But with Escobar at third, Scott at second, and one out, Bruce struck out Johnson and Jennings. Wind is going to push that well back into the seats, and it's still one and two on Jennings. Slider, did he go? No. Alfonso Marquez is the first base umpire. He looked like he offered it that, but didn't get the call. Back with a fastball, and that is jolted into left center field, into the crosswind, and Kane makes the play. Boy, that was a good looking swing and it sounded good. It might have been a little different result when we get into the summer months and that wind's blowing out of the south. It's just a long, loud out here and two down in the eighth. And now Matt Joyce, who is homered in both games of the series and both home runs coming in the first inning. Misses down and in with ball one. Little bit low. Boy, good spot though. It's right where you want it. in the bottom of the eighth have Butler Hosmer and Kane three and one right center field Kane and Frank Coor and Lorenzo makes the play again. A scoreless eight for Aaron Crow. Royals by one at the end of seven and a half.
promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Billy Butler showing off his poses after his hits. He gave the muscle, he gave the upward side to back to the dugout. And then, that little air guitar working. Nothing on that one, but it would have been interesting to see what he would have done then. But he did knock in a run. Nine to eight, they're holding on. And here's another former Royal, so three in a row. This is Joel Peralta. Jamie Wright pitched the seventh. And Kyle Farnsworth got the final out of the six. And that was the biggest inning for the Royals when they scored five. Well, he's been really stingy. Look at that ERA. He's got a good one. Just the opponent's only hitting 156 off him. He's got a fastball, 88 to 90, slider and a split finger. Two and zero. Oh. Peralta pitch for the Royals in 2006, 2007, and 2008. For beginning his big league career with the Angels. Yeah, I remember him starting out there. Billy with a good rip. And you might remember the story. He began his big league career with the Angels, but he began his professional career with the A's. He was a position player and wasn't much of one, and he was released, went back to the Dominican Republic, was pitching or playing on a summer team, and was asked to pitch. Three balls in one strike. Playing third base in a summer league game. His team ran out of pitchers, so they put Joel on the mound. And even though he didn't hit much as a position player, he always had a good arm. And that was the beginning of a brand new career for him. He's had a nice long career now. Let's see what the wind does with this one. Loney gets closer and closer to the dugout suite, but down to a knee to make the play. And there is one down. Well, coming up on Saturday when the White Sox are here, the first 10,000 fans will get a Billy Butler bobblehead courtesy of Sprint. That's a 6-10 game with Chicago, and the gates will open at 4.30. Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets. Hey, Billy Butler might be starting a new trend. They're all doing the air guitar now. Ball one to Eric Hosmer. 0 for 3 with the run scored. Reached on an air in the sixth inning. There's the Billy bobblehead. It's pretty good. Billy said it, maybe it should have been a little thicker. But he said he looks more like a sprinter with that body. One and one. How you doing over there? Are you cold? Are you warm? Good. I'm hanging in there. Okay. I'm warm as long as they got the lead. Nice play by Loney. It'll flip over to Peralta in front of Hosmer. Two down in the eighth. So Hosmer is 0 for 4, but his play when he came to the plate in the sixth inning was the biggest part of the inning when he reached on an air by Escobar that could have ended the inning, and it would have been a one-run sixth. But because of the air, the Royals continued to hit and score after that, and it became a five-run sixth. More unearned runs. Lorenzo Cain has driven in two tonight, and he has scored twice. It's just now starting to drizzle. Strike from Peralta. That's a nice split finger. You don't see too many guys throw that for the first pitch strike. Unless you're confident, and he is. One 
One and one. Ball, two strikes. It's turned into a blanket night. Not only was it warm earlier today, I mean, it was muggy warm, like June weather. Hit hard right to Zobris at second base. So Peralta comes out of the pen. Gets the Royals one, two, three. So Greg Holland comes on for the ninth, and the Rays will have the middle of the order: Zobris, Longoria, Loney in a one-run game. Boulevard Royals Live is coming up after the game. Joel Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery getting ready to break this one down. Second straight, straight night that the offense opens up. We'll talk about that. Hear from Ned Yost. Reaction from the clubhouse with Nate Bucati. And much more coming up from Rivals after the game, Ryan. All right, thank you, Joel. And Greg Holland on for the save. In a wild game. Royals 9-8 in the top of the ninth. It won't be easy with Zobris, Longoria, and Loney coming up. Not the call. Zobris thought it was low as he snaps his head back and home plate umpire Ted Barrett. Ooh, man. Tough spot to hit that ball there. If he stays there, be quick work. He's bringing that ERA down gradually. Good, hard mid 90s fastball, slider, and a split finger. 0 oh 2. That's what Ned Yost likes to see. 0 oh 2. Zobris homered in the first inning, back to back with Matt Joyce for his third. And then he singled and scored in a two run seventh inning for Tampa Bay. And that was a big inning for them because the Royals had a 9 6 lead after scoring eight unanswered runs. Figure that Tampa Bay was just demoralized after giving up a couple of big leads earlier in the game, but those two runs were important for them because it's been a one-run game ever since. Zobrist and Longoria coming home in that two-run seven. It's been a long game. It's been a cold game, and for the Rays, a frustrating game to this point. Two and two. Oh, 
right to Johnson gets a nice big hop and throws out Zobrist. You can imagine if Greg Holland is having a bit of a flashback right now as the wind or the rain is just starting to fall. Go back to April the 9th. We had two big strikeouts against the Twins. The rain coming down very heavy and with the bases loaded and Joe Maurer at the plate. Greg Holland who got up to a slow start this year struck out Maurer. And he has looked like Greg Holland ever since. And now here he is with the rain just starting to fall and the temperature dipping toward 50 degrees. And short sleeves on. Evan Longoria. Three hits, a home run shy of hitting for the cycle, and Greg Holland would like to keep him right there. One and one. It's a tough one to lay off of there. It's that splitting. Split finger. That looked like a swing. Nope. And it looked like Longoria was asking for the appeal. He did ask him. You're watching. The point. Check it. Yeah. Let's go ahead and check it. I know That's I didn't right. swing. Balls, one strike. Now Longoria has six home runs, and those six home runs have been in his last five games. There's not a whole lot of power coming up after him. But Holland goes right after him and throws a fastball right by him, three and two. Has struck out in his only previous at bat against Holland. Got him with another fastball. Climbed the ladder on him. And for the Royals, nine strikeouts tonight. What great sequence of pitching there against Longoria. A lot of split fingers. He laid off him. And he powered the ball by him. And as Longoria walked up, walked off the field, he looked at Ted Barrett and he said, Where was that? And Ted Barrett said, Is a little bit up. Perfect location to get a swing and miss. And now Loney, who has two hits and two RBIs, and he's hitting 380. are down to their last strike. Not a very big crowd tonight as you can imagine with the light drizzle now the dipping temperatures. They've seen an exciting game. And everyone that is here is standing. As Loney hits it on the ground to Johnson. And the Royals begin May just like they finished April with an exciting come from behind victory. Best come from behind victory so far this year, in my opinion. They battled, they stayed in the game. Bruce Chin came in and threw two shutout innings, and he'll earn the W. Chin, 
and the pin to win with some frenzy hitting attack. Excellent win for the first day, Mayday, Mayday. And the big inning for the Royals was a five run sixth inning. And that's our fourth play of the game. Yeah, they just went to frenzy hitting. They had it out at home, didn't take it. That might have cost them. Osmer hit a ball in the hole, you know, dropped the ball, and that just kept the rally going. Lorenzo Kane dropped one in. Ended up having a good night. Frenchie, that was the one right there. Knocked in the last two with a nice little top spin, two bouncer through the infield. Can you see that?